when I started, there was, uh, I think, six business units, mm -hmm. uh, 300 employees. Mm -hmm. uh, our revenue stream was $150 million a year. Mm -hmm. So going, can you imagine going <laughs> from an artist, sitting in my studio, painting, all of a sudden I'm sitting in an office and I've got 300 people, $150 million revenue stream, and I'm going, all right, let's do it. So after I after I taught myself, I learned and I just went okay. I, well, let's take Shell can Canada for, or Shell at the time. Uh, Shell Canada at the time or Albion Sands, which is no, no longer there because they got purchased by um, CNRL. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know they had this whole thick book on how to be a manager. Hmm. They get indoctrinated and become brainwashed. It's really weird because I had a really good friend who I met in university and. Um, she was all about learning about Aboriginal people and, and wanting to help Aboriginal people. And then she got hired by the oil company. And her intent was to work with the Aboriginal community. And before too long, like within months, I, I, can, I seen a change. It was really weird. It was just like, uh, you know, to say the, the, the worst situation would be they, f they, f I f they felt just like a robot. And it's unfortunate. So for an Aboriginal company to utilize tools about that come from the non-Aboriginal community is easy because there's books and books and books in there. But for non-Native people, non-Aboriginal companies to do that, there's very few of them. There's one, you know, there are people out there doing that and helping other businesses, helping communities and stuff um, um, with working with Aboriginal people, uh, but it's kind of a new industry. It's kind of a new way Where of that doing art things. came from because they've always had an affection towards art, especially paintings. And uh, I started to look at that culture, and I realized, you know what? I come from a culture of artists and a culture of Aboriginal people, and that's when I realized, you know, I got a really strong traditional community back home. That's you know that there's a rebirth in our community. And um, so I came back with that whole idea that I'm going to look into what it is to be First Nations because I wasn't raised in that environment so much. We, we'd go back and visit and we felt at home once we got because all my cousins, my, my grandparents were there, all my aunties, all of them lived in the, in the, in the Aboriginal or in Fort Mackay in the community there. Actually, this is a painting so that I did where my grandfather is signing a contract with a company to go on his land and survey it. They give him. They gave him so much money. You know, he was happy. He was an old man. He needed the money. At the same time, he realizes that uh, by doing this, he's gonna. You know, that they're gonna go on go onto the trap line and, and scare away the animals. He had to come to a to a balance in his own heart of where. He wanted to be with that because I'm sure he's seen the future and I'm sure he knew that it was going to change and but he comes from a long line you know his clothes were ratty you know that money he got made a big difference in his life he got him a new motor for his canoe or his um, his little 16 foot canoe got him some gas you know he's able to go up and down the river all by himself and kept him you know, kept him in the bush. It, 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 it allowed him a chance to continue living the life that he had chosen. This is in a painting, you know, one of the very few paintings that I've done where there's been 12 layers of paint on it. And as you get closer to the face or to the hands, I put a lot of emphasis in both hands and face when I'm painting. And um, the colors start to trickle out like little stars twinkling in the night or little pops of colors. Mm -hmm.